When you think of Japan, one of the first things that comes into your mind is clean. Cleanliness is in our DNA. The world was so surprised at our cleanliness in 2018 when they saw Japanese fans at the FIFA World Cup cleaning the stands after matches. But imagine if the world saw this side of Japan. I'm pretty sure you never had this image of Japan in your mind. This is a gomi yashiki, which means garbage house. As you can see, there are homes or even apartments that have been completely neglected. Piles of food, garbage, and filth make it completely unlivable. And yet, there are people who can and do live in them. <laughs> I hope for many of you, when you look around your own house, you don't live in such a mess. However, I cannot say the same thing for myself because I spent my early 20s living in a room that looked like this. But why did I let it get so messy? That's one of the things that I want to share with you guys. But you might be wondering how common are these garbage houses in Japan? Well, in 2017, it was reported that every single local government office in all 47 prefectures of Japan have garbage houses within their communities. So, basically, all over Japan. These gomiyashikis are such a huge problem for the communities. As you know, Japan is a tiny country and many people have to share space with others. In fact, that's the reason why many public places in Japan are so clean. We have a belief that shared spaces and properties belong to everyone, so we must keep them clean. But when someone has a garbage house, they break the unspoken rule and make life harder for people around them. In 2009, a man living in Kyoto had so much garbage in his apartment that it flowed out of his apartment and onto the shared walking path outside. His pile of garbage was 2 meters high by 4.4 meters wide. There was only 40 centimeters of space for other residents to use. This was definitely a nightmare for one of the residents who was in a wheelchair. All that garbage made it impossible for her to enter or leave her own house. If the man said, that's not garbage, he couldn't be forced to clean a single thing. His neighbors begged him, the police begged him, even city officials begged him. This continued for many years, until one day, for the first time in Japanese history. City Hall, open up! What? まったく。自分勝手な行動をしていると思いませんか目の前の道はみんなのものって分かってるでしょ。なのにあなたは自分のゴミを積み上げている。ゴミじゃない。そうかな。まあいい。<笑> <そうかな? 笑> 今日はお前のゴミを回収しに来たのだが抵抗するなら仕方がないお前をゴミもろともぶちのめすお前も俺のゴミコレクションにしてやるうわあ貧弱貧弱いやちゃちゃちゃちゃちゃちゃちゃち
he was showing off his new oil match and having trouble lighting it. Well, after a few tries, he finally got it lit. Except he lit the fuel tank on fire. Then he threw the lit match into a bag of tissues that he used to clean up lighter fluid, causing it to catch on fire. Then he decided to move the bag of fire, but he spilled some of the fire. Then he decided to fight fire with fire, but then it caught on fire. By the time he realized that water was the antidote to fire, it was too late. The fire grew out of control and burned his house. This guy's room wasn't even that messy, but he still had enough boxes laying around to burn his house down. Luckily, he and his family survived, but I don't think he would be so lucky if he had way more garbage around him. Of course, these two incidents are just extreme cases. But imagine if the apartment next to yours looked like this. Can you imagine the disgusting smell of all that rotten stuff seeping into the walls into your apartment? Now you know how I feel after Mr. It has beans for dinner. So how does someone let their house get to this state? As I mentioned earlier, in Japan, public properties are treated with respect. But when it comes to our own homes, that's a different story. The home is a very private place for us, to the point where it's not very common to invite people over. When I was in America, it was very normal to spend time not at a cafe or a mall, but at someone's house. I'd say we spent most of the time hanging out at home rather than spending it outside. That's very different from Japan because we almost never invite people to our house. In a survey, Japanese people were asked how many of them were comfortable with friends over at their place. Only 30 to 40% of people in their 20s and 30s were okay, but that percentage dropped to 21% for people in their 40s and 50s. So when you really have friends over, it's easy to let your house become messy. And for a lot of people, because of stress, they treat their house like a giant garbage can. A lot of people buy cheap stuff that they don't even need, hoping that it will make them feel better. And because of Amazon, it's even easier to fill your house with unnecessary things and garbage. For me, stress is definitely the reason why I made my own room a giant garbage can. When I graduated college, I was so excited to start my life as a working adult. I was entering a new point in my life. But very quickly, it became a mess. I had a well-paying job at a prestigious institution, but instead of feeling happy or proud, I became so depressed and stressed. As I became more and more overwhelmed, I started to fall apart. I would go to department stores after work and buy really expensive clothes and jewelry to relieve my stress. I thought that by getting more stuff, I could feel better about my life. Once I got so stressed, I couldn't think straight about anything. I became very numb to everything around me and everyday life just became so difficult that I stopped taking care of my own room. At some point, it got so messy that I couldn't remember when was the last time I saw the floor of my room. There were papers, books, and garbage on my desk and even on my bed. Those fancy clothes that I bought after work, there were many times where I just threw them on the floor and never wore them. I realized that I couldn't keep living in such a mess, but I didn't have energy to start cleaning up. There was just so much garbage all over my room that I felt like anxiety and then overwhelmed. And I'm sure that's how a lot of these people who live in Gomiyashiki feel. I'm sure they feel anxious, overwhelmed, and powerless to clean up their house. Even for me, just looking at these videos makes me feel overwhelmed and disgust. But there are people who can help! if you find yourself surrounded by mountains of your own garbage. There are companies that specialize in cleaning gomi yashiki. They'll collect, sort, and throw away your garbage, clean the floors and walls, and turn your garbage house into a normal house. Most of these cleaning companies charge you based on the size and dirtiness of your house. But I wasn't gonna call one of the companies to clean up my room. I think that was related to a deeper cultural problem. In Japan, there's a beautiful word, motainai. It means wasteful. For example, 
When you see someone wasting food and you feel bad, you say "motai nai." But the way we've been using the word is actually very different from original meaning. "Motai nai" usually refers to something that is not used at all. I thought I would wear these clothes or read these books, but the truth is, I didn't. So those items were actually very, very "motai nai." When I saw all the books, papers, clothes, etc., sitting on my floor, I feel like it's such a waste to get rid of it. This is quite a normal way of thinking for Japanese people. Perhaps that's why there's been a rising popularity in the idea of danshari. In 2009, a Japanese writer Hideko Yamashita popularized the idea of danshari. Dan, cut off, cut off the flow of new, unnecessary things that enter your life or home. Sha, throw away, throw away those things already in your life and home that are weighing you down. Ri, stay away, stay away from temptations that may bring back unnecessary things back into your life. This idea has been gaining a lot of acceptance in Japanese society, especially with how complicated our lives are. But Danshali isn't just about getting rid of physical things around us. It also includes unnecessary relationships, activities, habits, beliefs, sources of stress, etc. So by cutting off, throwing away, staying away from things that don't make us happy, we can have a much better life. So I decided to apply danshari to my room. I started throwing away everything that I wasn't using, starting with clothes. It was actually really difficult to do. Because I thought they made me happy, but if I never wore them, what kind of happiness were they bringing me? Through Danshali, I was finally able to clean my room and see the floor again. Of course, this idea is similar to minimalism. The next part of my life I applied Danshali to was my job. Of course, it was so difficult to say goodbye since it was such a well-paying job. Also, my parents couldn't understand why I would give up such a good job, but I had to do what was right for me. Finally, I applied danshali to all the people who weren't good to me. In many cases, I only spent time with them out of obligation or fear of being alone. But in the end, I decided to have fewer friends rather than feeling pressured or stressed by getting rid of those unnecessary things. I felt like I have more control over my life instead of feeling so anxious and stressed. I started to feel free and happy. It's been many years since I first started doing danshari, but I still do it to this day. By doing it, I have more time to focus on things that are important to me. I have more time to spend with Mr. Eats, my family, and doing the things I enjoy doing. I have more space in my home and more space in my heart and mind. For the people and things that I care about the most.